was on the outs with my wife, scared to death my family's getting torn apart and you know, think that there's nothing I can do about it and that it's 100% my fault. Some good things happened shortly thereafter, which supplied me with all the support I could ever need and good friends and people to talk to. And it's all from people I met at Chapel Street Church. And we wouldn't be able to go if there wasn't a, a spot for Luke because he gets overwhelmed by all the people and activity in the, in the main worship area. Hey, right, buddy. Jesus loves me. Yeah. Yeah. I love Jesus. I was showing where the new buttons were, and he just kept pressing the I love Jesus, I love Jesus button, and he had this hugest grin on his face, face, and he was so excited. He was like flapping around a little, which he does when he's excited. and. And I thought, you know, th this is it. You could just see the joy. Initially, I went back to church because the music. I really liked the music. But then, after listening to the music, then I would stay there for the message. And it's almost like every time the message was spoken, I was able to relate something in my life. When we went to our 20-week ultrasound, we were so excited to get to meet our baby. Uh, so we sat down and the doctor started to introduce um, some concerns. I was kind of separated from the church, and I feel that God knew that I was going to need the, the church family and him when my, when my dad passed. I'm Vládia Zeman. I'm pastor of the Baptist Church in Vysoké Mito in Czech Republic. And 11 years ago, uh, we met a bunch of uh, great people from Chapel Street Church. Uh, a year ago, uh, we started to build new sanctuary and it will be two times bigger and it will help us to do new things which we couldn't do before in our church. Just simple idea that we are growing, it's uh, changing minds uh, in people's lives in our town. And they gave me blankets and pillows and it was overwhelming. Like, I was speechless. The lady's like, are you okay? And I'm like, I don't know what to say right now. The first time in my life I was ever speechless. I realized that, A, it was all right to have questions. It was encouraged to have questions. And B, as I put the work in to seeking answers to those questions, those questions slowly started to dissipate. God just gave us those little verses that meant so much to us. and through the prayers of other people. Um, I don't know if there's ever been a baby who's been as prayed for and loved before he was even born as our son. And the church community came around us so powerfully and we just knew everyone was praying for us. From my Bible study group, from the worship band, just everybody, it just surrounded us with love. And I, I never felt God's presence like that moment. Here, Luke, I heard before you say how much you love Jesus, and we know that Jesus loves you. So because you profess your faith in Jesus Christ, it's a privilege to baptize you. There's this joy, I think it's a joy and an innocence that um, he has that we, we don't all have. It was surreal in the sense that all of the misery and the drama of getting divorced and the hell I was going through could not triumph over the positives of developing that relationship with Jesus and meeting all these lifelong friends that I can call upon and say, hey, <laughs> I really need your help. You know, anytime now that something bad's happening, my immediate instinct is to pray. I'm closer to God now than I've ever been in my entire life. For us, this building process is a big deal and we we couldn't do it without your help to see your church, how we work, and how we can work in the future. Yeah, it's just amazing. <laughs> if it wasn't for Chapel Street Church, I don't know where me and my kids would be right now. I don't even know if we would be even in the apartment at this point. And I'm blessed every day that God got, you know, spoke to people and said, hey, help this family because I don't know how much longer I could have hung on.